So I got a little ahead of myself yesterday with a video about one of the things I use Plan 9 for. So in this video, I'll cover some of the rest of how and why I use Plan 9. Um, that sort of question, what do you use Plan 9 for? is a very common one, you know, especially because uh, you know, Plan 9 is an operating system. It's there to help you run other programs. I'll go ahead and put the uh, obligatory, like, you know, screenshot of the uh, nine front FQA on why you probably shouldn't be running it. But that goes along with my typical disclaimer that I'm not actually running, you know, plan nine, but I'm using nine front. So fork of plan nine. Um, I originally started on the legacy plan nine, uh, the port for the Raspberry Pi done by Richard Miller. Uh, I had a few Raspberry Pi 3Bs sitting around. Finally had my chance to try out Plan 9. I've heard of it since forever ago. Um, so with that many little computers, I was able to start playing with you know separate file and CPU and terminals uh, right away. So got the full experience right there. So why do people you know in general use Plan 9 or 9 Front? Well, it's because it's a research operating system. It was designed by engineers for engineers to test stuff out and try try out new ideas. Uh, Plan 9 was made at Bell Labs to replace the previous system, which was Unix. And Unix came out of various ideas from the Multics project, uh, which was research into uh, large time-sharing systems. So in my case, to get the most functionality out of Plan 9, I do run dedicated file and CPU servers. So in a highly networked environment, why does anything or why does everything need its own storage? Um, storage is done on a specialized file server. Heavy computing is done on a dedicated CPU server, and that fetches data off the network as it needs it. And since I have a CPU server, I can also use draw term, which means that any Linux or Windows computer in my house can double as a Plan 9 terminal. Uh, I have a Linux workstation in my lab, it has three monitors hooked to it. I'm often running several instances of draw term. Uh, the only Linux stuff I commonly use is just the web browser and a PDF reader. Uh, I do also run a couple bare metal nine front terminals. So in this here is one of my terminals. Uh, it's one of those old original Raspberry Pis. Um, I have it plugged into a video capture device and you know normally what I'm doing is I'm you know I'm writing code. Uh, usually running you know Acme. And, uh, you know, typically I'm doing stuff like I'm writing kernels and drivers for various MIPS and ARM systems um, so I can port 9 front to them. Uh, then I do various things like drivers for, you know, weird I squared C devices so I can sort of expand the functionality of these various ARM and MIPS systems. So uh, one I've talked about like several times, and I'll put a link down below to the actual video where you know, I originally discussed it was, uh, you know, CO2 sensors. So let's see, I have it here. So the backstory behind those is that, you know, my wife is a big plant nerd and she wanted to know if all of her house plants really do anything for the air quality in the house. So I started uh, looking around the internet and I found this video by Jeff Gearling. Um, Interesting guy. He does a ton of fun stuff with Raspberry Pis and other devices. Um, and sure enough, reading CO2 levels is a thing you can do. Uh, however, the Linux way of doing this stuff involved some special APIs and running Docker containers and a bunch of other things that seemed like overkill for what was reading a sensor. So, you know, I have some Raspberry Pis. I bought me a little... Uh, CO2 sensor that could talk over I squared C and I you know ended up writing my uh, my own like driver for it so this thing is just needs to read an I squared C device um, that shows up as files in a file system um, it reads the sensor translates the data into some text and makes that look like a file so all the text to you know can Vert the uh, the ones and zeros off the sensor into text and make it look like files. Let's see, that came out to run this little command here, find out how many lines are in it. Uh, 289, so a little under 300 lines of C code to 
uh, read a CO2 sensor. And since it shows up as a file and I get the nine protocol for free with the operating system, it means those files can be just shared across the network. So I have a CO2 sensor that can be shared over the network in less than 300 lines of C. You know, the other thing I mess around with a lot is, you know, trying to hack into IoT devices. Um, it isn't always practical to install Ninefront onto a device, uh, but what I can do instead is basically translate whatever it wants to speak into text in a file, um, and then abstract the whole thing as a set of files. So I did one up. I'll, again, I'll have a link below for the the Wiz light bulbs. You know, and this talks to those. Um, so yeah, this one's a little bit more complicated because it has some stuff to parse JSON strings. Um, and it actually has to talk to the network to send commands to the bulbs and read the replies back. But let's see here, this one comes out to... Three hundred and eighty, so less than four hundred lines of C code to uh, have my own personal control of these little IoT smart light bulbs. And again, once I translate the JSON strings into some other easier to read text, you know, for free I get the libraries that can abstract that as files. And once I do that, I can then share those files over the network. So like the video pie doesn't actually have direct control of the bulbs. Um, I have another machine called lab pie and I can pull in that over the network. So I already set it all up here. I call it MSFS, we'll put it in N. So here we go. I can now look at this light bulb that's on over my head. It's on an arm lamp, and I can go ahead and see that it is indeed on. It's running at this color temperature. It's set to that rate of dimming, and so yeah, this this code isn't actually running on the video pi. It's running on another one, but I can share them over the network um, very easily. So what do I do on Plan Nine? I write code and I hack stuff. Uh, it's basically what it was designed for. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, why use it over Linux? Um, I might make a longer rant video about Linux, uh, but in short, Linux got too complicated with too many competing interests. Uh, it's really telling that the biggest users are, you know, uh, companies that use them for servers, uh, which it was arguably designed for. Um, it's kind of the right tool for the right job in some of those instances. Uh, but when you look at everything else, it's like, Android, Steam OS, OpenWRT, and other stuff for wireless routers, which is all basically Linux that's been stripped down and then covered in a layer of something else to actually make it fit for purpose. Um, you know, people just basically want that pure hardware abstraction layer. They're not interested in the rest. You know, in the case of Android, they put an entire other thing on it to give it an actual nice graphical user interface that works with a touch screen and audio, you know, as flawlessly as possible. Steam OS basically runs a Windows layer so that you can play games, you know, and stuff like OpenWRT and your typical Wi-Fi router. Again, they like having the drivers for the networking, but your actual interface is some janky uh, web server. Um, famously, lately, they're full of bugs because, uh, you know, again, web servers weren't actually designed to manage networking equipment. It was meant to share scientific papers with links to other scientific papers, but you know, that's, that's the state of kind of the state of the art of the Linux world right now. Um, you know, plan nine isn't entirely a blank slate, uh, but what it does come with is fit for purpose, at least the purposes, uh, I have and the ones I'd argue a lot of people do have nowadays. Um, most people find themselves in a highly networked environment full of heterogeneous machines um, that, you know, right now don't have an easy way to talk to each other, but this system just allows me an easy way to talk to all these devices. You know, but others use Plan 9 for other tasks, so I'll put a link below to a site where, you know, other nine front enthusiasts put their code. You'll find audio tools, game ports, 
programming languages, compilers for other architectures, lots of networking stuff, uh, experimental file system abstractions. So, you know, take a look, get inspired, uh, and as always, have fun.